Congratulations to the class of 2021. You made it. You did this. You earned this moment. I hope you take a moment to really let this sink in, knowing that you were just beginning an amazing, amazing journey. Amid these trying and historic times, you earned a degree from Arizona State University. What an accomplishment. What an accomplishment. As we struggle through and try to get through this year and this first, of course, and second year of the pandemic. I'm so excited to be the 2021 Spring Convocation speaker at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Your university is one of the top journalism schools in the country, and now you are stepping into that great and incredible legacy as the new generation of Cronkite graduates that will surely impact the world in a very big way. So to the graduates, thank you for allowing me to share this time with you as you receive your degrees and begin this new phase in your life as undergraduates, as graduates, as students on campus and remote and around the world. I am so excited to be speaking with you. And to the faculty and staff at ASU and the Cronkite School, thank you for trusting me with this incredible opportunity to share some words with this amazing group of hardworking graduates. And thank you all to the people who have supported the class of 2021, including the moms, the dads, the grandparents, the uncles, the aunts, the cousins, those special friends. You had these graduates' backs when they needed you. And this is also a celebration of you and your individual villages. I have to say, I really wish I was there with you in person. I would have loved to be meeting you students and touring school buildings. I would have loved to to visit and to be in some of your classrooms in this amazing institution. I would have loved to, of course, also visit some of my colleagues at Arizona PBS and PBS NewsHour West. I know you call it a teaching hospital, what you do there. And it is incredible that you are able to do so much as students um, and to be part of the PBS system as students. I would have loved, of course, to be in Phoenix cheering you on today, um, but know that your accomplishment, whether you're on campus or remote, an undergrad or graduate, that it is no less important that we are gathering today virtually. And rest uh, rest assured today, as you receive your degrees, you are already your ancestors, your parents, those who came before you, you are already their wildest dreams. So continue to strive and to really thrive knowing that that is the reality. Now, let me start by stating the obvious. 2020 and of course, 2021 have been awful. Globally, nationally, personally, professionally, full stop. That said, these years have also made it clear that we need more than ever a clear-eyed, dogged press who are able to push for answers. Millions of people in our nation are mourning the loss of loved ones, of family members, of friends, of neighbors in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic that has torn through communities and killing and has killed hundreds of thousands of people, many of them disproportionately black people and people of color. Millions have also had to face the deathly consequences of systemic racism. As a result, our nation has gone through and continues to go through a racial reckoning in the wake of the death of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and so many others. And on top of all of that, so many of us are still processing the seizure of the Capitol on January 6th following the false, ac- the, the false words, the false um, accusations that the, that, the, that the election was rigged, that the president, um, President Biden, that he wasn't legally elected. All of that, though, has made it really, really clear that there are dangers of white supremacy um, and that communities um, are threatened by white supremacy and that our democracy is threatened by white supremacy. But what does that all mean to you? What does that all mean for you as graduates? What it means is that you've picked an amazing time to dedicate your lives to being professional witnesses, to being the voice of the American people to holding leaders accountable, to exposing hard truths when needed. At every step of last year, it's become clearer and clearer that we need a vibrant and diverse press that is allowed to dig for truth, to tell it like it is, and to directly push back on leaders when they seek to mislead the public. The last year has taught us that we also have to value diversity. 
diversity in race, in gender, in socioeconomic backgrounds, in geography. And you are stepping into a press that needs you more than ever. So as you step into this career field, I have three things I really want to share with you. Um, pursue your life's passion and purpose. Stay the course no matter the setbacks and do the right thing even when no one is looking. So, so pursue your life's passion and purpose. Pose this question to yourself and listen to what you say as a result. What is, what is inspiring you? What do you cry about that others don't cry about? What do you stress over that others overlook? What could you focus on every day of your life for the rest of your life and feel fulfilled? Get hungry for that thing and pursue it with fervor. As a White House reporter, the thing that drives me is holding powerful people accountable and being a voice for the voiceless, people who may never walk into the White House. It's how I came into journalism, wanting to write about civil rights, wanting to write about human rights. Now I ask you, make a career out of the thing that drives you. You are already quite certainly a class of problem solvers and survivors. So focus on the areas that move you and give yourself time to figure out your passions and stay the course no matter the setbacks. Staying the course means giving yourself time to develop. Before I was a journalist, I worked at McDonald's. I was a telemarketer. I worked at a leather shoe store in Miami. I was a helper at class reunions in South Florida. Maybe you're graduating without a job or without the job that you thought you would get. Maybe you're graduating with a lot of student loan debts and are so anxious about what comes next. I'm here to tell you, give yourself some space to develop and focus on putting one foot in front of the other and pushing through. And even if you're graduating into what you believe is your dream job, brace for it. When I started my career in journalism, the setbacks came quickly and they will come for you too. So stay the course, drown out the noise and go forward despite the hurdles and do the right thing even when no one is looking. This advice comes down to what the late Congressman John Lewis called good trouble. John Lewis planned his last words to this nation um, to be published in the New York Times on the day of his funeral and he wrote this, when you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do its part to help build what we have called the beloved community, a nation and world and society at peace with itself. Ordinary people, he said, can do extraordinary things when vision and when they have the vision and they can redeem the soul of America. He said that's what he called good trouble, necessary trouble. Political journalism is my good trouble, and I implore you to find yours in this amazing industry that you are stepping into. Now, you might be the only black person on a social media team or the only person of color in a morning news meeting. Maybe you're the only person from a rural town in a big city paper or the only woman on an editorial board. I tell you, speak up. Don't be afraid to let your experiences allow you to make the places where you are better and where you can be honored when you feel like you've made those places better. Do what is right. Now, class of 2021, go forward. Good luck with confidence. I know that you are going to be an amazing class of problem solvers, of people who will embrace all of this. I know what it's like to graduate with the anxiety of not having a job. Um, I know what it's like to weather so much. Um, I, I applied for hundreds of jobs, yes, hundreds of jobs before I got my first job in journalism. So I tell you as someone who has been through it, that you will get through it, that you can push through, have a support system, have people that have your back, lean in on your village and know that you are not alone, that you're not the first person to face a, a tough job market, that you are not the first person to have to deal with issues of diversity and a racial reckoning. So know that your voice is an important one, that just graduating from the amazing Cronkite School means that you have what it takes to navigate this industry. So I implore you not to give up, not to give in. Know that if you are nervous going into your first job or you're nervous about what comes next, it's because it means something to you. 
It's because you know in your heart and in your body and in your mind that this is the thing that you should be doing. So even when you're nervous, lean into that nervousness sometimes. Let it let it wash over you. Understand that all of the things that are going forward, that you already have the skills and the tools to do them. So I just ask um, and that you will keep me updated on all of the things that you accomplish. I am so excited to hear from all of you, to see all of you. Um, and until we can meet in person, I want to say again, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you.